Remembering our objective, given two options, we're going to select the correct answer. And we're going to select it by moving our player, which is our red circle, into the option that's correct. It's going to essentially collect that object. So let's go ahead and add in one of those options. Remember earlier we created the square sprite that is now a rectangular platform. So let's go into the sprites folder. So we're going to go into our scene view. And let's go ahead and drag this square into the scene. And I'm going to drop my square a little bit before the edge. So just so everybody has a uniform transform, we're going to do a negative 3.5 in the X and 0.15 in the Y. So it's hovering above the ground. Let's also go ahead and switch this color. Let's make it a dark green. Perfect. As of now, when we play the game, our circle is going to run and it's not going to collect it or be stopped by it. But if you remember how we prevented the circle from falling through the platform, we're going to use a box collider so that we're aware of when the player comes into contact with our game option or our green square. So select the square and we're going to add a component and we're going to add that box collider. And you can see if you turn the sprite renderer off that you have the outline of the box collider. So now when we run the game, we're going to have the ball run and hit the box. But that's not what we want. We want it to be able to collect the square. And to do that, we're going to make the square a trigger. And this is going to also require a little bit of code. So go to the box collider 2D and select is trigger. Now when you run the game, the circle goes through the square again. So we need to add code to have the square disappear. And that will represent it being chosen. Where we're going to write this code is going to be within the player script. So go to your scripts and double click the player script to open it up. We're going to do new function and this one's going to be called void on trigger enter 2D collider 2D other. So what this function is doing is taking into account when the player comes into contact with another collider, a collider 2D that's labeled as other. So if that's the case, the other collider, so other dot game object, because it's going to be another game object. is going to be set active and we're going to set that to false. Remember to save your script often by hitting command s. You wouldn't want to lose your work. So void on trigger enter 2d says that when this player because we're in the player script when the player hits another trigger we're going to set that trigger to false. So basically, we're going to deactivate the sprite on the screen. Another option would be to destroy the game object. We don't want to do that, though, because after each question, we would have to recreate that same sprite. Instead, we're just going to have the sprite disappear and reappear. So we're going to set it to false. Go ahead and save that, and let's go back into Unity. Now when we run this, you can see that the square has disappeared. And let me show you exactly what happens to that. If we have the square selected, go to the game screen and unselect maximize on play if you have it selected. 
Now we're going to watch what happens to this square. As we play the game, we're going to roll into the square, and you can see in the right hand quarter in the inspector, the square has been deactivated. Let me do that one more time. See the square is active. Now we're going to deactivate it. So pay attention in the right corner. And now it is set to false. If you looked at our player script, by selecting it once, you can get a preview of it in the inspector. The code we just added has any game object that is a trigger within the collider being deactivated. So if we had multiple different objects that we needed triggers for different circumstances, as of right now, it would just deactivate all of them. But because in this game, I want both options deactivated when collected, we don't have to worry about putting a tag. And I can go in depth with tags in a different series, but for now, just recognize that when this player comes into contact with any game object, selecting square, you can see that if any other game object had this is trigger selected within a collider, that it would set that object that's associated with the box collider to false, so it would become inactive. But since we want both of our triggers, once we have two options, to become inactive when selected, this code will work for our game.